You know, ever since I began profiling the lives of the most important characters of Narnia, there has been one person that's been requested time and time again. His transformation from insecure and reluctant follower of Aslan to a bold-hearted warrior and king has been an inspiration to countless generations, both young and old alike. I'm talking, of course, about Peter Pevensey. And today, we're going to talk about the life of Peter, stopping along the way to point out the major events during his time in Narnia. But before we get started, I wanted to take a minute to tell you about my daily work. You see, I work at home at a desk all day every day, and I've been really focused on my personal health this year. So I was beyond thrilled when today's sponsors, FlexiSpot, sent me a beautiful FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7 to try in my workspace. You see, I've been a standing desk advocate for years, but the cheap electric desk that I bought secondhand just wasn't cutting it anymore. Those weak motors were always jamming up and the sharp edge corners were hurting my wrists and the poorly designed buttons were always getting stuck. That's why I've been so impressed with this FlexiSpot Pro E7. The desk has been designed with the highest quality in mind. I mean, the frame on this FlexiSpot E7 is so strong that it doesn't even wobble when it's raised to its highest height. Unless, of course, you give it a big shake, which doesn't happen very often, and of course, that's inevitable for any two-legged standing desk on the market. I also love how I could design the right desk for me. I ordered the beautiful real bamboo desktop with the curved cutout and also picked some extra accessories like the under the desk drawer and the desk mounted power outlet. But there are so many more options and accessories that I could ever list here. And with a 30 day risk free return policy and a 15 year warranty, I highly recommend that you click on the link in the description below and give this desk a try. And as always, I want to offer a huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon and give a quick announcement. Now, in just a few weeks, I'll be announcing a Patreon live stream game night. And some of the prizes will include some of my all new merch from the Into the Wardrobe store, which is in the link below. Now, I put together some really great designs that I'm proud of, and I'm really excited for you to check them out. So if you're not already a Patreon supporter, you want to get signed up soon so you don't miss this special event. Well, there's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. It's time to leave the Shadowlands behind and step into a world that's more real than our own. It's time to follow me into the wardrobe. Peter Pevensey was born in the city of London in 1927. He was the first amongst four children, one year older than his sister, Susan, three years the elder of his brother, Edmund, and five years ahead of Lucy. Now, in the late summer of 1940, when Peter was 13 years old, the German Luftwaffe began a merciless bombing of London, infamously known as the Blitz. Now, Peter and his siblings were evacuated to a large countryside mansion, which was home to an old professor named Diggory Kirk. The mansion itself was rumored to be magical, and it was during their time there that Peter and the others would discover the enchanted wardrobe, which would change their lives forever. Early on in their time at the mansion, Lucy had claimed that the wardrobe was actually a portal to a magical world called Narnia. But after examining the wardrobe for himself and finding nothing of particular interest, Peter dismissed Lucy's claims as childhood fantasy. However, a few days later, in an effort to hide from a group of visitors who were touring the mansion, Peter and the other children jumped into the wardrobe, only to discover that it was not only very cold inside, but also snowing. Peter quickly realized that Lucy's land of Narnia was not only real, but they were in fact in this magical world in a region of Narnia known as Lantern Waste, to be exact. Now, Peter's first day in Narnia was quite eventful. Deciding to explore the world a bit, Peter and the others followed Lucy to the home of her friend, Mr. Tumnus, only to discover that his house had been ransacked and he had been taken away by Jadis, the White Witch and False Queen of Narnia. Now, once outside the cave, the children met a large beaver who quietly and hastily implored the children to follow him back to his lodge. It was at this moment that Peter first heard the name that would occupy his mind and his heart for the rest of his life. As Mr. Beaver whispered, Aslan is on the move. Now at the lodge, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver explained that the children were in grave danger because of the White Witch's fear of the Golden Age prophecy, which foretold that when the four sons of Adam and daughters of Eve sat on the thrones of Ker Paravel, the witch's power would be broken and her curse of eternal winter would be lifted. Now, Mr. Beaver had been instructed by Tumnus to take Peter and the others to meet Aslan at a sacred site known as the Hill of the Stone Table, 
However, the plan was complicated by the disappearance of Edmund, who had slipped away into the night to find the White Witch. Surmising that Edmund had come under the spell of the White Witch, Mr. Beaver urgently led Peter, Lucy, and Susan off to find Aslan, who was now Edmund's only hope. The cold, snowy journey across the Narnian landscape was treacherous at first, but soon the snow began to melt and signs of spring started to appear. Now this was a sure sign that the Queen's magic was weakening, and greater confirmation came later that day when Peter and the others were visited by Father Christmas. Peter was given the gift of a broadsword with a golden hilt, known later as the legendary sword Rindon, as well as a silver shield bearing the bright red crest of a lion. And he was told that these tools, not toys, would soon prove to be useful. By the end of that day, Peter and the others reached the high hill of the stone table, where over the horizon, beyond the great gray slab of the table, Peter was the first of the children to lay eyes on the glimmering great Eastern Ocean. And more importantly, he met face to face the great noble lion known as Aslan. Now, Peter was the first of the siblings to ever speak to Aslan, who in turn welcomed them to his camp. Aslan then took Peter alone to the high hill to show him the place far in the distance where he would one day reign as high king of Narnia, that great castle known as Caer Paravel. However, the moment was interrupted by an attack from Jada's secret police, led by the great gray wolf known as Mogram. Aslan commanded the army to hold back and instructed Peter to fight Mogram on his own. Peter nervously but hastily drew his sword and rushed in to confront the beast. After a brief battle and a flash of blood and heat and hair, the monster lay dead at Peter's feet. For his heroic act, Peter was knighted by Aslan in an impromptu ceremony at the side of the battle and was given the title Sir Peter Wolfsbane, the first recorded member of the Noble Order of the Lion. That day was very eventful. Edmund was rescued by a raiding party and brought to Aslan's camp. Aslan negotiated the release of Jadis' claim on Edmund's life and the Narnian army moved their camp to the fords of Baruna. And during the march, Aslan spent his time alone with Peter, explaining his plan for battle against Jadis' army. Aslan instructed Peter to prepare to lead the army in his absence, though he did not go further into detail on this. That night, while Peter and the army slept in the relocated camp at the Fords of Baruna, Aslan was executed on the stone table. The next day, Jadis' army marched to meet the Narnian army on the battlefield at what would become known as the First Battle of Baruna. Peter bravely took his place as the commanding general of the Narnian army, leading the charge as the battle between good and evil finally came to a head. Peter fought bravely alongside the other Narnians, but it wasn't until the shocking arrival of Aslan himself, along with new reinforcements, that the battle finally began to turn. Within a very short time, Jadis' army was defeated, and the White Witch herself lay dead at Aslan's feet. Three days later, a coronation was held at the Great Hall of Caer Paravel, where High King Peter the Magnificent and his siblings took their throne and finally fulfilled the Golden Age prophecy. All of this took place in the Narnian year 1000. Peter ruled Narnia for 15 years and during his reign, he worked tirelessly to return Narnia to its former glory. Fighting in the Narnian army as they rid the country of the remaining Jadis loyalists, sailing the eastern oceans on the great ship, the Splendor Hylian, and visiting the long neglected islands of the Narnian Empire, establishing an alliance with the neighboring kingdom of Arkenland, and even opening diplomatic channels with the southern country of Kalorman. In NT 1014, King Peter led a raid to secure the extreme northern regions of Narnia from the northern giants. Under his rule, Narnia had been brought to such a time of peace and prosperity that these years would become known as the Golden Age of Narnia. And it was during this time of leisure that a report came in that a white stag had been spotted in the area of Lantern Waste, and the kings and queens decided to go on a hunt for the legendary creature. During their chase, they came across a strange iron post planted in the ground that they vaguely remembered. And as they drove further in, the trees softened, eventually becoming as soft as fur coats until they all spilled out of the wardroom door. No longer the grown adults they were in Narnia, they were now children once again, and it was still the Earth year 1940. Peter and his siblings had only been gone minutes in our world. About a year later, in the early fall of 1941, Peter and his siblings were waiting to board a train to take them to boarding school when another magical portal opened, pulling them all back to Narnia once again. 
While this new and overgrown world seemed foreign to them at first, it was also strangely familiar. It was Peter who realized that they had returned to Narnia, though not the Narnia they knew and loved, but a much older place. The children came upon two Telmarine soldiers who were preparing to drown a small red dwarf named Trumpkin. After fighting off the soldiers and taking them away, Trumpkin explained that it was now the year 2303 NT, over 2,000 years since Peter and the others had left Narnia. During that time, the kingdom had been invaded by humans from the land of Telmar, who had driven the creatures of Narnia into hiding under the current usurper of the throne, who called himself King Miraz. However, the Telmarine prince named Caspian X had rallied an army of true Narnians to fight their conquerors, and it was Caspian who had blown Susan's horn to bring Peter and the others back to Narnia. Caspian's army was under siege at Aslan's Howe, the ancient site of the Stone Table, and Trumpkin had been sent to bring Peter and the others there at once. The group departed quickly for Aslan's Howe. It was a treacherous journey and Peter guided them poorly many times as he disbelieved Lucy's claims that she had seen Aslan several times trying to guide them in the correct path. However, Peter eventually saw Aslan as well in an early morning meeting in the forest. Aslan sent Peter and Edmund off on their own to rendezvous with Caspian and his army while Susan and Lucy remained behind with Aslan. Now when the two arrived at the How and entered its chambers, they found Caspian fighting for his life with a black dwarf, a werewolf, and a hag. Edmund and Peter jumped into action and killed all three attackers, saving the life of Caspian. Together, Peter, Caspian, and a council of Narnians devised a plan to defeat the Telmarines in spite of the much smaller numbers of the Narnian army. Instead of launching a full-on attack, they challenged Miraz to a duel with Peter as the High King serving as the Narnian champion. However, the duel was disrupted when Miraz himself was murdered by one of his own men, and a full-scale battle broke out, which would eventually become known as the Second Battle of Baruna. The battle was somewhat chaotic, but Peter and the others fought valiantly against the Telmarine forces, and the battle was turned when the Awakened Trees arrived as reinforcements. Soon, the Narnian army drove back the Telmarines and trapped them at the River Baruna. And with that, the Telmarine army surrendered, and the three kings of Narnia declared victory. Later that day, Peter knighted Caspian, who was made a member of the Noble Order of the Lion. And the next day, it was announced across the land that Caspian X was now King of Narnia. Five days later, Aslan brought Peter and his siblings, as well as the remaining Telmarines, to a glade at the Fords of Baruna, where he had set up a large wooden gate that served as a portal to our world. In a private meeting with Peter and Susan, Aslan informed the two that while Lucy and Edmund would have further adventures in Narnia, Peter and Susan's time in Narnia had come to an end. And so, Peter led his siblings through the portal gate, stepping back into our world and out of Narnia, or at least this Narnia, for the last time. For the next eight years, Peter lived a fairly normal life. He completed secondary school and even spent some time studying under the tutelage of Professor Kirk. In 1949, he reunited with the seven friends of Narnia, as they called themselves, and they gathered to reminisce about their days in Narnia. While they were together, they witnessed a ghostly vision of Prince Tyrion, who appeared in obvious distress. Now, before he vanished from sight, Peter spoke to the Phantom the first time in recorded Narnian history that communication was sent in real time between dimensions. Convinced that it was a sign that they were needed in Narnia, the group devised a plan to retrieve the magic rings that had been buried in Diggory's backyard so long ago and use them to send Eustace and Polly back to Narnia. Peter and Edmund, disguised as construction workers, were able to successfully retrieve the rings and took them immediately to the train station where they had planned to meet the others on the arriving train. As the train came into view, Peter noticed that it seemed to be going around the bend a bit too fast, but by then, it was too late. Peter and his brother, along with the other friends of Narnia and the Pevensey's parents, were all killed in a tragic train accident. And so, in 1949, at the age of 22 years old, Peter Pevensey's life on Earth came to an end. But Peter's story didn't end there, for after Aslan called down the stars and closed up Narnia, Peter and the other seven friends of Narnia watched from beyond the stable door, watching from Aslan's country, the true and greater Narnia, where they would forever reign as kings and queens once again. For as Aslan put it, the term is over, the holidays have begun, the dream has ended, this is the morning. And that's just the beginning of the story 
of High King Peter the Magnificent. <laughs>